on the answer to all your questions. Hey guys, welcome to Tokyo Secrets. This is your host Nathan Desa from AnimeSecrets.com, and you might you'll know me by my agent name Vulcan Silver on here. And today on Tokyo Secrets, we are continuing our Double to Sentai Juoger. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, here on Tokyo Secrets, and we're continuing it now, kind of in a similar way that we did our Tokyo Huge reviews. Where instead of reviewing one episode per video, we're ba we're going to review like multiple episodes in one video because we just think that's a much better format. Plus, it kind of eliminate. Plus, it's kind of good for time uh, time restraints, considering how we're it it'll also prevent us from keeping up with the series. But so today we are going to review episodes two through six of Geoger. And joining me here on Tokyo Secrets today is Hi, I'm Anthony Davis, also known as Green Boy on Twitter, and I'm also joined by. Hey guys, Rizwan here, and I'm also known as CMD Drake on Twitter and Instagram. And dang, that opening is giving me some chills and goosebumps. Nathan, mm -hmm. you did great. Thank you. Awesome. No idea how I got my voice to sound like that, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. So as I said, we are reviewing episodes two through six here of the Ultra. And before we get started, uh. But I I can, I ha, I still have some catching up to do. Like unfortunately, the last episode that I watched was episode six because uh, it's been hard been being able to watch Dewager, especially since Toei is unfortunately going on some major copyright hunt to take all the episodes down. Ugh, uh, though, though thankfully, Kiss Asian hasn't been taken down. So thank you, Kiss Asian. We love you for that. Uh, but. I've been hearing that, I mean, especially from the two guys that are here, that the series is getting better and better, and I'm looking forward to catching up this weekend, so... There's no lawnmower I mean, yet. No, thank and God. Cool. And we're 18 episodes in, and the 18th episode of Me Ninja was the lawnmower episode, so... That's there's no we way all to... quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, some of us may have watched that episode where... Uh, Yoshi, like Koda from Power Rangers Down to Charger period, I didn't watch it, because, I mean, even that wasn't enough to get me to go back and watch it, but... I watched the one little clip on YouTube, and that was it. Oh. So, yeah. Yep. I mean, all I can say is that, I mean, obviously, I mean, aside from Gal Ranger, I mean, Super Sentai's anniversary seasons are looking really great, so... All I gotta say is, I mean, what the hell, Power Rangers? I mean, why can't you make a? Why can't you give us a good anniversary season at least, like how uh, Power, now how Super Sentai is? I'm looking at you, Legendary War. Looking at you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tisk tisk. So moving on to the uh, plots of these episodes, I'm just gonna get like brief plots to script. Like, I'll give I'll give some details that are important, but for the most part, it's just uh, like. Kind of a minor recap. So uh, for episode two, uh, episode two was called "Don't Underestimate This Planet," and pretty much uh, to cut it short, Tusk is still being a dick, uh, pretty much picking up immediately. It's like, uh, like he's he's refusing to work with Takaharu, and he even takes a uh, he's refusing to work with Yamato. Sorry about that. And dang it, I was moving way too fast. And Wait, this is Takaharu. Can we start over again, please. No. We're gonna keep going. You, keep you going. make a mistake. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I gotta stop talking too fast. Look, no, it was no, it was partially our fault because we because we kept talking about we, it. We kept clowning you for so long about it. it it's, in, yeah. it's in your system now. But, okay, he's refusing uh, to work with Yamato. Yamato good, not the Haru bad. Uh, he's refusing to work with Yamato when he takes his cube, which is basically his hench device. I can't. I don't. Are they just called GQ suspension devices? Because I don't so, know what the yeah, yeah he well, takes away like, his cube yeah, and he leaves and so then Yamato takes the other four Ju uh, other three Juogers uh, Amu Leo and Stella and for a while we get and for a while we get uh, just some comic relief antics, you know, like Leo, who's the lion, he climbs up on a tree. Sella, who's the shark, is swimming around in the fountain, and you know, Amu. I mean, I'm not sure how this makes sense. We, I mean, I guess tigers drink or something, so she's going out and getting a drink. I mean, that's weird, but you know, what you gonna do? Uh, well, they do like then, milk. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right milk about and that. Fruit and stuff, yeah. 
So then Yamato takes them to his house where he lives with his uncle Mario. I mean, that's how his name is spelled. I'm sure it's pronounced. Yeah, it, his, his full name is uh, Mario Mori, Mori. And, you know, while they're there, we get some more comic relief, you know, like, which is which I'm pretty sure is just going to be a recurring gag throughout the series. You know, the Jew man, like, doing some weird things that don't add up, and Yamato's desperately trying to, you know, cover it up. Uh, in fact, uh, for this one thing, uh, we actually see the first of these, I guess we want to call them civilian powers. Uh, where like Leo like has like this has like this weird roar thing like he roars so much that like he like knocks Mario off his feet oh and uh and just while we're here for the civilian powers uh Sela who's the shark gets the superhuman hearing ability uh Amu for some reason gets the super tasting ability which is kind of weird and yeah uh, and we'll we'll actually get to tusks uh, at the end of this episode but we figured this out uh for these three at least and. And I want to get to Tusks at the end of this because I want to briefly mention a kind of a nitpick with that. Uh, but then after that, uh, the next day, Tusk and Yamato, they meet. And uh, Tusk is... Uh, one of the reasons why Tusk is being so hostile toward him is because, you know, he's wondering, like, how Yamato, a human, was able to turn into... Uh, gain the powers of an eagle. Oh, and for the record, uh, since... <clears throat> Since Yamato has some eagle powers inside of him too, uh, he has like kind of like superhuman side, like you know, like eagle eyes, basically, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And so then Yamato reveals to him like this kind of backstory that we were kind of shown in a uh, the first episode where, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, uh, as a kid he was falling off a cliff, and then this bird man, who obviously he was a Jew man. Uh, he saved him and gave him this cube, saying it would protect him. And for some reason, that and you know, after thinking that, and you know, obviously, I guess since a Jew man deemed him worthy, uh, Tusk gives Yamato back his cube, saying that they'll need help. And then the five Jew Jew ogres come together, and they defeat the monster of the day. I think they're called Death Galleons, uh, yeah, the monster. Yeah. And we also get a different form of Jew King this time. It's a uh, this time, uh, Jew, Jew Eagle, Jew Elephant, and Jew Tiger combined. I'm not sure what if they give any different uh, names for these uh, formations. Uh, plus, there's not even that really big of a difference. It's like, all of a sudden, except that. Well, okay. The one cool thing is that a uh, Jew King in this form has like claws on its knees, which is pretty cool. But other than that, it has pretty much the same finisher and. Yeah. I mean, it just has different colored legs. I mean, there's pretty much no difference between these two formations. Uh, so then they get back home, and we discover Tusk's ability, which he apparently has, like, a, you know, a super smelling ability, which which is why, like, you know, he's able to, like, pick up, like, these horrible scents in the house, and he wants to leave, but then they force him, and that's how the episode ends. And I'm, I, I'm guessing I get where they're going with the whole super smelling ability, because... You know, he's an elephant, so he has a big nose, but I don't think, ele I mean, and I mean, I'm no, zoo I'm no ju zoologist, so I mean, obviously, if there's anybody who's an expert with animals, you, you can feel free, to, feel free to correct me on this, but I don't think just because elephants have bigger noses, they have enhanced smelling. I mean, if no. anything, I would, have, I would imagine that maybe it would make bigger sense to give a, a Tusk the super hearing ability because I do know that because I mean I've heard this from some people that because elephants have much bigger ears they have like some enhanced hearing but I mean I mean like I don't think their trunks enhance their smelling ability that much. No, I mean, they use that for like eating and like and drinking water and like for, like getting themselves baths and stuff. That's what they use the tusks for. I mean, so, they, they, they suck up the water and then they like you know spray it all over themselves. That's how they take. That's how they shower and stuff. If anything, the super smelling ability would make. I mean, okay, I'm okay with Leo's, but you probably should have given that ability to Amu because her civilian power of being like able to taste things. I mean, that makes no sense. I mean, that should belong to Cell, to be honest with you. Because I mean, she's a shark. She does eat, you know, stuff. Yeah. You know, she's so, a shark. It makes sense. So give Sella no no give Sella Amu's ability give Tusk give Tusk Sella's ability and give Amu Tusk's ability and wow I just confused myself saying that sorry about that um, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but yeah, overall, uh, episode two was pretty good. Uh, just sets up the team. Uh, I did actually catch on to this in the second episode, uh, how Yamato is the only one that has his own personal weapon, because the G-Wojers, like, so far the only weapons they have are their standard uh, sidearms, which, you know, is basically the blaster that becomes a sword. Uh, but Yamato has his own personal eagle riser weapon, which is like this whip-like sword, and I really like that, because when he holds that in the roll call, it makes him look like a lion tamer, and he and he is a human who has tamed all these all these animals, so I think that's actually a cool touch, honestly. I don't know uh, yeah. that before. That's so yeah, episode cool. two, pretty good. Standard, like, I don't want to work with the episode. I mean, it still worked out good. I mean, yeah. It was um, really funny about, like, there's, like, one like, one scene of that episode when, like, he just basically brings all of them, like, like on a leash, like, like they're a bunch of, like, his pets or something like that. It was really yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, really, I'm going to tell you, you're just going to chain them up like your animals. <laughs> so then we move on to episode three. Uh, the ep- episode three is called Want to Go Home But Can't, and uh, because Geo Oger is, you know, being pretty smart, it's actually, uh, this Basically, the first four episodes are devoted to uh, are devoted to the each of the rangers for character development, which is something that's cool because I'm a Bo Kinger did that because uh, Bo Kinger gave episode one to Boken Black, episode two to Yellow, uh, three to Blue, four to Red, and five to Pink. And well, here I mean, not like the first five episodes aren't devoted to them because. Four, and we'll get to that in a second, is devoted to both Leo and Sella. But I mean, it's still, I mean, it's better than nothing. I mean, it's cool that the first four episodes you get to learn what all these characters are about in some ways. So, so anyway, so yeah, this, okay, so episode one, I mean, technically episode one was all about, was about all of them, but kind of leaned a little bit toward Yamato. Uh, Episode two, well, that was tusks, and you probably could have figured that out with when it comes yep. to Spain. Mm-hmm. So episode three, we're now giving it to Amu, which is weird because, I mean, obvi- I mean, they're kind of going in like the weird order because, like, in the roll call, it's Yamato, Sela, Leo, Tusk, and Amu. So, but I mean, they didn't go in that order. They didn't go in like the order of the roll call either. I'm both sure, so I really don't care. But just kind of funny to note that. Um, so yeah, the episode uh, with Amu is the duo just that are out looking for the for the sixth cube, and they're called King's Marks for the record. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and you know, while they're out, you know, Sela, Tusk, and Leo are all being, you know, they're all serious about it. But while Yamato and Amu are out, Amu's more interested in you know doing girly girl things, like you know she's trying to shop, she's buying expensive stuff, which is probably. You know, screwing up Yamato's expenses, probably. Uh, and she's also, like, eating all this stuff, because, you know, when you have a super tasting ability, you just want to exploit the hell out of that. And and pretty much, uh, uh, Yamato is able to use his powers to, like, see the King's Mark that they're looking for, but they don't get to it in time. And, uh, and... I'm not sure how this whole thing relates to Amu. Like, I think it establishes that Amu really wants to get home, but, you know, she's she, just... Yeah. She's trying to be as optimistic as she possibly can. Yeah, she's not trying to stress about it, because if she's stressed about it, then it will cause her to worry more and more and more. And, yeah, that's pretty much what we learned about Amu. Simple character, but, I mean, it's still fine. And the only other thing to note about this episode, which I guess is kind of a big deal, is... uh. You know, they're fighting the latest Death Galleon, and while they're fighting in Jew King, and once again, we're, you, we're doing uh, the ones with uh, Eagle, Tiger, and Elephant. And uh, here, and this is my only gripe of the episode, uh, it appears like it comes literally right the hell out of nowhere. Uh, we get a new Zhu, like Zhu. Beast, or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> and in this case, it is a... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's called a draft. It's called the draft. I mean, it looks like a draft. It's, uh, it's cube, uh, cube Kieran. Kieran, actually. Kieran. Uh, yeah, Kieran. Right, 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 right. Uh, and pretty much it 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 becomes a bowgun-like thing. Like, it becomes like this blaster thing that you yeah. uses. Uh, what I actually... Know. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just want to point something out. No, go ahead. I do like that the, uh, the side mechs aren't just, like, 
you know, add-ons and like this, like add extra, you know, weapons for their arsenal. It's actually just the weapons themselves. They aren't just like you know another arm or another leg. You know, they use is actually just a weapon. It's pretty interesting. It makes it better. It makes more sense. Yeah. It's kind of a weird way that they introduce it since there's no build up. It just comes out of nowhere. But I mean, I don't know. I think we've had worse uh, extra yeah. production. Sword out on for you. Sword out on for you. And sword mm-hmm. out on for you in the back. Mm-hmm. Sword out yeah. on for everyone. Makes a lot. I mean, it'll be how Mega Force did it. Like that was terrible. Mm-hmm. He just gives it to you because. Science. I don't know. <laughs> and then the episode ends. Uh, Amu admits that she's still being a little pessimistic about returning to G Land. So Yamato says, "Okay, well, to keep your spirits up, we'll look for the King's Mark, and we'll also teach, and I'll also teach you guys more about the human world. And the first thing I'm going to teach you to do is housework. And yeah, everybody's excited about that, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it was a good episode. I mean, another standard episode setting up character, but I mean, I." I I kind of liked Amu a little bit more after I watched this episode. Uh, I mean, she's obviously being pretty smart. Like, you know, she comes off as pretty optimistic, even though she's being kind of pessimistic. But, I mean, overall, it's good. I mean, not, not, nothing bad to talk about in this case. Uh, plus, I, I'm pretty sure in this episode, you discover uh, Yamato's eagle eye thing, and... Again, I mean, I think that's a really cool power. It's probably the best uh, power that any of these duo get. get. Uh, so, yeah. Great episode. So then after that, we have uh, episode four. Episode four is called Howl in the Ring. Uh, and as I said uh, like two minutes ago, this episode is devoted to both Leo and Sella. And pretty much the premise of this episode, uh, we learn... Uh, it, it's another setup episode. Uh, Leo is showing himself as like you know this kind of kind of chauvinistic, but at the same time, uh, you know, chivalristic guy who wants to like help the girls. Because as the episode's beginning, uh, Leo and the girls they're going out uh, shopping, and oh, and uh, early in this episode, uh, Tusk also tells Yamato like, hey, uh, Leo, he's a bit of a ladies' man. Just gonna give you that, which is, which I mean, I don't know. I guess Leo could be a hit with the ladies. I mean, that hair will attract anybody, won't it? No, uh, not at all. I was being sarcastic in my case. Oh, but, I'm, uh, I'm just making sure that it's understood that, that no, he has a really weird character design, honestly. Yeah. Like what me, I mean, when me and Ronald went to Acon a few weeks ago, we actually showed episode one of Zero Zero to a friend of ours, and. His first reaction is, why does he have dreads? And I'm like, he's a lion. <laughs> I guess it makes sense. He's like, if it's a lion, he would have, like... A long mane. A mane or something, not dreads. I'm like, well, they can't give him a mane, so I guess dreads the next best thing? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure it's just, it's just a wig he's wearing. It's not like his actual hair. That'd be surprised if it was. <laughs> no, that's definitely a wig. It yeah. has to be. So, so in this episode, uh, you know, when we see, like, Leo being a little, uh, like, bit of a ladies' man, you know, uh, Sella's wanting to be a bit more independent, uh, and then, and then later in the episode, uh, pretty much, uh, with this whole premise, uh, this new Death Galleon, uh, he captures the two of them, and he puts them in this fighting ring where he forces them to fight each other, and, and pretty much with this, uh, well, we learned a little bit more about Sella than Leo, where uh, Sella, who I'm guessing we can pro I mean, I'm tempted to call either her or Amu the youngest of this team, but probably Sella, especially since her actress also just so happens to be a little bit younger than those, than the other actors. Yeah, and what's really, really interesting... Oh, go ahead. Is she really I the think, youngest one? I think. Don't quote me on that, but yeah. pretty sure. Okay. That's uh, surprising to me, honestly. What were you going to say, Anthony? Oh, I was surprised, but like when you actually do watch the episode with the Death Galleon this time, he's actually like a based on like Viking, which Vikings are known for like fighting a lot, so it makes oh. sense. And while they're fighting, uh, you know, Leo's being the ladies' man, he is like, "Hey, I don't want to hit a woman." And and Sella, because with this episode, we learned that she, like, as the youngest, uh, 
she really hates to be underestimated. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And and that, and throughout this episode, when she and Leo were fighting, she's demanding that Leo give it her all because apparently, uh, when they were like younger and in Juland, they were actually fighting. But the tournament. The tournament. Yeah. yeah. And, but uh, it, there was clear proof that Leo was holding back because he didn't want to fight a woman. A woman's. In fact, he thinks men should protect women. And I'll there, I'll agree. Like, with that. Yeah. Well, there's. A good and bad between that is like yes he's actually being chivalrous not wanting to fight a girl but at the same time when a girl does say it's okay you can fight me you know it, it's a competition you know we're, you're not gonna hurt my feelings or hurt me if you do you know yeah. but it, it's it's something guys always do with everyday basis it's not just something that happens you know often not often as it should it happens often a lot so mm-hmm. You just gotta get used to it, you know. Like when a girl says you can hit me, you know, like fight me, then fight her. Yeah, like don't hold back just because she's a girl. Because you're, because you know, she's giving you the okay. If she gives you the okay, then yes, you can fight her. But if she's like, you know, not want to fight you, then don't fight her. <laughs> don't do it. It's a trap. It's <laughs> right. A <laughs> yeah. Listen to Admiral Um <laughs> It's a trap. But- I can't tell you how many times, how many videos I've seen where like dude, where, like girls would like just you know try to fight guys, and then like when they fight back, it's like, oh well, you know, she she should not have fought back, you know, it's it's you know it was wrong for her like him to you know punch her like that because she's a girl, like, but he but she was going off on him first, like, like it, it's just bothersome is all, but whatever. So they're so in, so they're fighting, but then the other duo jurors show up because they were because Yamato had Tusk use his super smelling ability to uh, smell Sella's socks and I am so glad that they had him smell the socks and not something else. Right. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And I mean that that would be the definition of creepy. And I've seen some pretty pretty creepy stuff in the show, so I mean Actually like, it was Leo's sock. Was it Leo's or Okay. Yeah, it was Leo's yeah, well, socks. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They had him smell Leo socks, and then uh, and then Tusk doesn't want to do that, and then Amu's like, "Hey, you want to smell some of Cello's stuff?" And then Yamato's like, "No, no, 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 no." Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, that was hilarious. Although there's a bit more of some, uh, even uh, and even the show is kind of aware of how creepy this is because uh, when Tusk is smelling it, uh, Mario comes in and he's all like, uh. What are you doing, man? I mean, no, no judgment, but just wanted to be doing. Man. So, uh, but yeah, so they find the other two, and and then all the two Ogres come together, and they defeat the Death Galleon uh, with the Kyunin Bazooka again. Although this time, uh, it's back to the standard Geo King. It has uh, eagle, shark, and lion, and. Then the episode ends with, uh, and we actually don't really get much of a resolve up at this time because Sella's is still angry that Leo was holding back because there's still proof that Leo was holding back during their fight, and you know, and so, and it ends with Sella vowing that she's going to fight Leo someday. Actually, someday. I actually, but, I actually thought that like Leo wasn't holding back that time. He probably was. He might have, I might have, I just don't remember if he did or not, because I remember at the end of the episode, he was like, man, you know, you really kind of sucky. I mean, I wanted to fight, you know, didn't want to fight her, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's something we can help. And then this episode ends on a cliffhanger. We see this house in the middle of nowhere, and inside is a gorilla geoman. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. But yeah, it was a good episode. I think this was probably uh, my favorite one uh, of the first four, uh, because I think, uh, I think Sella had the best setup. Yeah. I don't want yeah. to say Sella's my favorite, mind you, but I do definitely want to say that Sella is still uh, Sella is still good. I mean, I think she probably has the uh, most uh, potential. Uh, well, like the most like clear arc. I mean, because you know, with everyone else, it's kind of standard. I mean, uh, you know, like Leo's just a ladies' man, Amu's the optimist, and Tusk is the serious one, and. I mean, obviously Yamato has a lot of it's not a huge thing, but I think Sella probably has the second most uh, room for an arc, and maybe that'll be expanded upon. And I do want to say this, uh, uh, 
she kind of reminds... I mean, basically, I think Sella is what Gal Blue from Gal Ranger was if he was done a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, like the kid that doesn't want to be underestimated. Because, I mean, let's be honest, that's what he, and by extension, his Power Rangers counterpart, who I'm not even going to name, so that would be supposed to sell off. Uh, you know, that's pretty much what they were, but with but, you know, they're actually making us sympathize with her because they're not making Sella annoying. Mm-hmm. I do like her character. Mm -hmm. So, then we move on to the uh, episode 5. Episode 5 is called King of the Jungle. Okay, so are we going to have... So, wait, what? Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Like, I forgot the lame joke I was going to make. So just scratch that. Uh, that that just... That joke's a little bit. Um, <laughs> this is so, by Nathan Bissau. So, so as this episode begins, the uh, Death Galleons, uh, I, I, I can't remember the entire force, so I'm just going to say the Death Galleons, they're attacking, and uh, one of the generals, uh, I think his name is uh, Azard, or something, uh, he's this really cute-looking guy, uh, you know, he's he's sending this guy, this monster, who's pretty much this big jaw thing uh, called, uh, I think his name is uh, Gaborio. Uh, and he's sent down to Earth, and, but then when the Juo just try to find him, uh, he, he ends up getting, like, stuck in, like, this pile of leaves. And so while the Juo are looking for him, they instead find this other Jew man, and his name is uh, Larry, and he is a gorilla. And, you know, he's speaking with a lot of... Uh, with a lot of, you know, Spanish races like, hey, amigo! Uh, and, um, if... He's a Spanish-speaking person but he has, like, a name like Larry. And actually, he's actually a, a anime character in Joe Bizarre Adventure, uh, Stars Crusaders. He actually does the voice of a character named Joseph Joestar, who has a lot of English phrases. Mm -hmm. He says a lot of, oh, no! Oh, my God! A lot, so... If you watch that, yeah, then you'll... you'll... Oh, he says that in this episode, too. But I'll get to yep. that in a second. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Pretty much with the premise of this, uh, they meet Larry. Uh, they reveal that they're Jew-man, although Yama, uh, although he's under the impression that Yamato is a Jew-man, and remember that. Uh, and they're meeting at his house, and while he's serving them this tea, he figures out that... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I tell you this, I should probably tell you what he's doing here in the first place. He, uh... He pretty much came to the human world from Jewland because he's a scientist and he developed a, you know, fascination with humans and he wanted to study human life and so that's what he's doing here now. Or is he? Uh, and then then Yamato reveals that he's a human and he suddenly like freaks out and uh, runs away, saying like, "No, oh, no, 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 no!" Uh, mm -hmm. And and we fi and we figure out with this whole thing that. The reason why he's now afraid of humans is because, you know, all his, like, time, like, trying to study humans, whenever he, like, just walked up to a human and said, like, hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, they'd be like, oh, my God, it's a gorilla, run! Uh, you know, I'm just kind of like, what? Why are you so mean to poor Larry? It, it would really... A friend. But what really upsets me the most is that, like, have they not, you know, this is set in the same universe as all the other Super Sentais. Why is it that when Dr. Kruger is out, out and about, oh, people yeah. are like, oh my god, this is the talking dog. Like, you know, whoa. I think they're just set in different timelines. No, that's, that's, no, that's SPD. That's, that's SPD. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely and, I'm pretty sure it's set in the same time period as, like, the other... It really, it, yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen Deckard Ranger yet, but... It, it is. I've seen Deckard Ranger before to its entirety, and it, it, is, it is set in the same time period as any other series in, in um, Japan. I mean, come on. I mean, gorillas can't be... I mean, sure, maybe there's some gorillas who are violent, uh, but, I, I mean, if the gorilla's not trying to hurt you and he's trying to be friendly, I mean, can you at least, like, walk up and pet him? I mean, maybe he would find that kind of disturbing, but, I mean... <laughs> It's not like gorillas are the worst thing you can see. I mean, now, if it was the size of King Kong, then we would be having a different discussion. But, I mean, he's the size of a human. So, come on. Let me be nice. He's not doing anything wrong. I mean... He just wants some friends. I know, right? 
But yeah, uh, just to add some, like, you know, he ran away, and like once uh, there was this cop that saw him and shot him in the arm and hurt him really bad. Now that's not... That's not cool at all. Yeah, not cool at all. <clears throat> uh, so and that's the reason why he just, like hates all humans now. Like, he can't be around them because of that thing. He's afraid that, you know, they might attack him again. Yeah. So then we get some brief uh, comic relief where... The other Jew Ogers, uh, you know, because of course he accepts them because they're Jew man. Uh, they're they're trying to like have him, you know, become friends with Yamato. So they try to like slip him randomly and like, hey, can we help you pick your vegetables? And he's like, oh sure. And then Yamato shows up and he's like, oh my god, no! And then like, uh, again. you know, but then as he's running away, uh, there's this. Uh, he sees Yamato talking with a uh, with a deer, and he realizes that you know. While some humans may hate animals, Yamato doesn't. Uh, but then, and he forms a bond with Larry. But then, just as that happens, uh, one of the generals for the Death Galleon that I named uh, Azard, he shows up because uh, he was looking for his uh, Death Galleon, and the Jew Ogers start fighting him. And you know, because he's a general, he ends up becoming he's a little bit more powerful. So what happens then is that. Uh, he overpower well. He overpowers all the Geoders, but uh, Yamato takes a beating. Like he's pretty much knocked unconscious. So Larry transfers some of his Geo powers into his cube, and yes. Uh, we're having technical difficulties. I guess with Nathan's uh, mic. So yeah, he transferred some of the, like it transferred some of his power into uh, Yamato's cube, and Yamato can now hints and and use and gorilla he, powers. Oh, you're back. Okay, continue on. Yeah, and he becomes a uh, you know, uh, yeah. he's pretty much like this big, huge, muscular guy. And um, you know, funnily enough, he also does like when he does the cube gorilla thing. Uh, he does the exact same uh, King pose. Kong. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, but he does the exact same pose that uh, Ginga Blue from Ginga Man did, and Ginga Blue was a real thing, uh, Ranger. So that's kind of the reference that they made. And so then uh, they use this power to defeat. Uh, well, he uses his power to just completely overpower Azard, and he gets destroyed. Uh, and and yeah, I know what's going to happen in the next episode. But when I first saw this, I'm like, a general that gets destroyed in the in like the fifth episode, I mean, what kind of pacing is this? <laughs> it's weird what pacing. Is... I don't agree with the fact that he got the eight powers so quickly. Me neither. Also, yeah. is it just me, or I don't really care for the fact that Yamato has the power to gorilla. Like, that's just not a. I don't know. I... One, it was it... too soon. Two, the suit design for it's kind of lame, in my opinion. Yeah. It looks way better looking. And, then, and this is actually a form he can actually transform into, like, like on multiple occasions. Like, he doesn't even need to transform, he transform the ego to do it. Mm-hmm. And then, move, then moving on, because this is a two-part, and I'll get my over, overall thoughts on this, uh, like, when we get to the end of this. But uh, pretty much after they defeat Azard, they can't find Larry, and then this transitions into the episode six, a wild present. And this is going to be the last episode we cover in this video. Uh... They're looking for Larry, and eventually, when they're saving a group of people, they find Larry. But you know his, you know his fur is getting all gray, and he's aging. You know, and so obviously he should be aging, which is something that Chewbacca sure wasn't doing after thirty years in The Force Awakens. But, <laughs> but, but I love that movie, so I'm not gonna hate on that. Uh, but yeah, so, so they figure out that because Larry gave gave Yamato his Jew, Jew powers uh, that's like heavily depleting his life force so you know he's starting to age a little bit more because he has lesser time on this planet and of course Yamato being you know the animal loving boy scout that he is he starts uh, you know feeling kind of down about this and he even tries to give the power back although apparently that doesn't happen cause, it's irreversible you can't, yeah. you can't do it and this also gets him to wonder that maybe the uh, Eagle Man that saved him was probably dead too, because uh, 
Well, obviously, uh, that, I mean, I mean, you can probably figure this out now. Like, that Birdman obviously gave Yamato his geo powers, too. Yeah. I mean, obviously. And, you know, pretty much Yamato spends most of the episode kind of moaning about it, you know, because he might potentially kill Larry, but Larry finds Yamato and he convinces him to continue fighting because, you know, apparently, uh, because, you know, he's all like, hey, you help me realize that not all humans are evil and I even made a friend because uh, earlier in the episode they found him uh, saving this young girl. Uh, and, you know, because... Uh, Larry assures him that he's still going to be fine. Uh, Yamato gets his fighting spirit back, and they and they defeat uh, the Death Galleon that that returns in this episode. Oh, and I forgot to mention that uh, Azar just like right the hell out of nowhere at the beginning of this episode suddenly rebuilds himself through the cube, so he gets revived. So, which really begs the question of why you had to kill him in the last episode. Uh, but, but, but yeah. So they come together and they defeat. Uh, Gabriel, who I should know, and I mean, this, uh, uh, you know, he's kind of like, what he does in this episode, he's kind of like a, that pudgy pig monster, and I think it was called the Dora Pig from uh, G-Ranger. Uh, he eats the Ranger's weapons. Uh, so yeah, that's just pretty much like pudgy pig as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they defeat him, and then they, and then as they're about to fight, um, and this is one gripe I have with this episode, uh, um, the uh, uh, thanks to Yamato's new gorilla powers, he gets a new geo cube uh, called Cube Gorilla. It's basically this uh, gorilla-like cube. It moves like a gorilla, and it's got a giant cannon on one of its shoulders. Because why not? I mean, all gorillas carry around cannons, don't they? And uh, <laughs> it's not a nano. Right. Yeah. And and this uh, and this cube gorilla, it's able uh, it's able to combine with the uh, with uh, Jew, Tiger, and Elephant to form a new mecha called a uh, Jew Wild, and uh, and ba and Jew Wild is actually pretty cool. Um, I really like its finisher where it like shoots its fists at uh, enemies. It kind of reminds me of like the finishing moves for like uh, the Astro Delta Megazord slash uh, Super Galaxy Mega from uh, Power Rangers in Space slash uh, Mega Ranger. Like, I always like finishes set like that. Like, you want to punch a thing, but then just shoot your fist at enemies like missiles. So that's pretty cool. I always like that. Uh, yeah. It's and, loosely based off of um, Gal Muscle yeah, from Gal Ranger. It's loosely based off it. Yeah. Although this one looks infinitely better. I'm just thinking. Oh, definitely. It would, it was definitely way better. And, I, and I'm still going to stand by my claim here that, I mean, I mean I'm sure that the toys for the for the Duo Dramax aren't really that great, but I actually really like the looks of Jewel. So this in the show, I mean, because I mean I know that they're getting their hate, but I don't hate them at all. I actually think they're, uh, I think they're a lot better looking than what people give them credit for. Like I mean, I at least think they're better than the Tokyo Max. I mean, I mean because even in the show, the Tokyo Max were horrible. So especially uh, you know Tokyo, which had certain extensions in areas that it shouldn't have had, but uh. But yeah, so uh, with Jill Wild, they defeat uh, the new Death Galleon, and the episode ends uh, with Larry. He's gonna go and you know he's gonna continue his traveling and learning about humans, and he's also gonna help them look for the King's Mark. And you know they bid farewell, and that's how the uh, that's how the episode ends. And uh, I'm gonna say uh, this whole two-parter. Um, I mean, it has upsides. You know, the upsides are that uh, it's cool a to yeah, it's cool that we get new Jew man, uh, a new Jew man. Uh, you know, Larry's pretty cool. Uh, you know, we put Yamato through a legit arc that's pretty cool. Uh, even though it lasts only one episode, but it's still some drama that he would legitimately feel. Uh, the downsides to this: um, we are only we are only six episodes in, and we're already getting a new power up and a secondary mecha. That is happening way too fast. I mean, even Gal Ranger, which at times seem to like pull as many like additional mecha that they could like like as they could out they they did not have gal muscle by this point so and I mean I get it you know they they want to like have it I mean I'm hoping and I mean I don't know if they'll do this and maybe you guys know but I mean maybe they could form like Jew Wild and Jew King at the same time uh, you know they like have it so that all five of the Rangers can 
fight in a mecha battle, and I get it, but I still think it's too way too low to be getting some power ups and yeah. yeah. By this point. And I like Geo Wild. In fact, I probably like it a lot better than I like Geo King actually. But it's way too early to be giving us secondary. Uh, it's way too soon for secondary power ups as well. Like Gorilla does not need to be going on right now. Like mm -hmm. I'm late, way later on. I mean, I, can't, I mean, and I, I mean, I like the idea of Gorilla. I mean, it's kind of cool with the gimmick, but it's still. I mean, obviously, it's. I mean, obviously, it's just like they put some like paper stuff into his suit to make him look stronger. Uh, plus, I mean, plus it's kind of weird how, uh, like his. I mean, I don't know the whole way that his visor like uh, slides up. I mean, I guess that's kind of cool, but it was kind of weird to me. But uh, so yeah, I guess overall, what I can say about episodes five through six is that it is that. The story and introduction of a new Jew man, as well as the drama that talk, uh, that uh, Yamato, sorry about that, uh, starts goes through in episode six, is well handled. But the downsides are that they introduce things way too early. And, yeah. But I mean, I don't know if the, if that if introducing things a little too early is the biggest complaint I can give to you, Jew Oger, and you know the fact that they're not really. And, you know, the fact that they're at least trying with the plot in this episode. I mean, it's kind of like in Power Rangers in Space, where, I mean, at least in, even in the filler episodes of Power Rangers in Space, like, you can see that they're searching for Zordon, at least. Mm -hmm. and, and in this case, at least in every episode, they're looking for, a, they're looking for the King's Mark. I mean, not like in a Ghost Age or where they want to get home, but instead every filler episode just shows them, like, hanging out and the house, like having a soda, and be like, "Hey, what do you guys want to do today?" I mean, no, they're they're being very proactive with that. Yeah, they're very proactive. Mm -hmm. So they yeah, they actually are homesick. Go say sure was not. Yeah, and they're and like it was really interesting that they don't even go home at the end of like Go Sager, which really sucks. Like mm -hmm. all that build up, all that saying, "Oh, we want to go home," but they never go back home. What? There was a whole point of y'all complaining about wanting to go home and being homesick and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, even Giga Man, and I love that show. I mean, even though they didn't, they weren't exactly as proactive with getting back to the Giga Forest as I hope they were, they still go home in the end. Yeah, exactly. Plus, you know, Giga Man also had the advantage of, uh, you know, we were able to see what the life in the Giga Forest was like uh, before that. Uh, probably to a slightly better extent than this episode. But yeah, so that so that's one of my favorite things about this uh, series that uh, they're at least being proactive. I mean, pretty much the exact same way as you know, Power Rangers in Space. I mean, you, as I said, even in the filler episodes, Power Rangers in Space showed them looking for Zordon, mm -hmm. and even in and even in these episodes, which I, and I'm sure that there's filler episodes in Geo Sure, I mean, every Sentai is gonna yeah. have them. There, there. I think there was one or two. I don't remember too much of it. But it'll still show them, like, looking for the King's Mark even in those. Meaning that even the fillers, in the most minor sense, contribute to the overall plot. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, the, my only recommendations for a Jew Oger is uh, just stop introducing things so early, guys. I mean, first you introduce Geo King into in, in the first episode. And I blame Tokyo Future for that because ever since Cure. Ever since Tokyo, they've been introducing the main mech in the first episode. I mean, damn it, Tokyo! I hate you now. Mm -hmm. well, well, I mean, I always hated you, but now I hate you a uh, tiny pinch even more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're they're introducing stuff way too early. But as far as the plot is concerned, it's still good. Yeah. So, uh, does anybody else have any thought? Final thoughts on this? Um, I really love Zero there a lot. Like mm -hmm. he's the same thing that it's. Introducing some things way too early. I'm also not terribly impressed with the gorilla suit. I thought it was the same thing. They could have done it a lot better with that, given. I still don't like it to this day. Like, I'm uh, already like. Those are just like some things I was not really a fan of. Um, I'm hoping this didn't turn into, like, in the future, that Yamato has, like, five different different modes and. Or, like, you know, he's like a. Freaking whatever snail or whatever down the road. <laughs> snail, zoo <Zool>, snail. <laughs> I mean, like just different animals. Like he, just keep him an eagle and only eagle. Gorilla was not needed at all. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Later down the line, he does get into the form, but we won't know about that till like it actually shows up. Mm-hmm. 
which is really like unnecessary, but whatever. Yeah. And I know they haven't announced anything with like the scans, but I would really, and you know, I mean, maybe I'm just like you know being a maybe I'm just being way too optimistic with this, but I mean, I really hope that uh, Tusk, Sela, Leo, and Ami will at least get one different form, and they, I mean, whether or not they do, I mean, they probably won't, but I do hope that they do, like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, at the very least, like, uh, give them a, uh, full team power-up that they can all transform into, uh, and, and, like, all together, because, I mean, it seems like, I mean, I really hate to say this, but, like, Ghost Sager was the last season where we had a, where we had, like, a full team power-up, where they could all mm-hmm. transform it together, because, uh, you know, uh, Gokaiger didn't have anything because, well, I mean, they can transform into different, different rangers. What other power up do you need? Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I don't really like to count armed on for. Oh, oh wait, oh wait, no, no, no. Go Busters had power, cu- powered custom. Yeah. But that was, but that was only, only for the. But that was only for yeah. the. Yeah. Uh, Chiori Uchur, I mean, I don't like to count armed on for Chiori Uchur because that was just. I mean, that's just them getting their weapons. Uh. You know, but then it just had Cure You Red Carnival, which was essentially a battleizer. Uh, and Pokeuter had the hyper mode, but only one could access it at, at a time, which, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i kind of cool with those modes, but I think it's silly. And, uh, and I hear that Ninja had a power up mode. I think that they did. And it's it, was be shared, like- it was shared. It was shared. It was one, one, one at a time. Yeah, well, okay. And it's going to be a and, long time before even. And. Get- also, like, I mean, even though I'm not really caught up with it, only the guys have used it so far, which means that no girls allowed. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, wow. Even, I mean, oh, come on. I mean, even Shin Kinja and Tokyo, who had those shared power up modes, allowed the girls to use it at least once. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, when Tokyo did it, the girls used it at the same time and they were stuck together, which was stupid. But, but yeah, okay. I mean, going back to like my original point here, I mean, I really hope that we get. Like, I mean, at the very least, you know, they can give us like uh, some like like power up modes for like all five of the rangers, and not and not even like different animals. Like maybe just give them like some kind of armored form, or like you know maybe like maybe some like chest armor that's based off of it that reflects their animals. I mean, that would be fine. I mean, don't make something way too over the top, but. I mean, you know, if you can give us a full team power up mode, and you don't even have to give it to, uh, you know, the sixth ranger that we're gonna get, and we already know that he's gonna be in the series, so that's not much of a spoiler. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't have to give it to him, but just give it to the core five, please, because I want another full team power up mode. Yeah. One that, yeah. one that at, that everyone can access at the same time. Just please, Joey, give yeah. us. What was the last I'm, time we had? I, that? Like I said, uh, well, I mean, Gobusters, if you want to count uh, power custom. Uh, so yeah, go busters. Okay, and before that it was uh. There was that uh, uh super go sagers. Okay. Oh yeah. The okay. ultra mode thing that they got in a mega four. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Mm-hmm. It, it just didn't click because I hated that season a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I I think we've gone. I mean, I mean, here we are now going off on tangents. Uh, so yeah, uh, Jewel are still looking good. Uh. Not much else I can say. I mean, a few. I mean, a few problems here and there, but I mean, every. I mean, every sometimes can have problems, and you can't expect it to be perfect. And I think we can all agree, compared to uh, you know, Tokyo and the Ninja, Juo is still on a good roll right now. Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah, guys, that about wraps this up. Uh, thank you guys once again for. Joining us here on at Tokyo Secrets, and as I said in the last video, please contact us if you are interested in appearing in the series because we are looking for a lot of awesome people to join us. So, yeah, uh, thank you guys for joining us here, and I'm on my way to go and uh, catch up with you, Order, so we can continue the series. So, I will um, see you guys later. I'm watching W, so double. Until next time, <laughs> see your answers out. Hey you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. You can also check out Anime Secrets on Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Do you want more than that? I know you do. Then go to our website where you can see daily updates and articles and exclusive interviews.